What is up guys, McDouble's back again with a brand new video and today we're going to be kicking back up right where we left off in the last video. So I hope you guys enjoy and you're ready for some more world PvP and TBC action on the Shadow Hybrid. Let's jump right in. Okay, I'm going to keep trying to PK more people. Our goal right now is to make as much gold as we can so we can try to afford flying ASAP. And we still have to find out exactly how much flying is going to cost as well. So right now I'm PKing in the western part of hellfire peninsula that's where i'm going to get people around my level that's 60 maybe 2 to 67 ish range and uh, they're doing some of these quests in this general area so i'm going to keep looking i was just in like 3v1s before and barely survived so i know there are people here it's just a matter of finding them a few moments later you know i've honestly never given zangamarsh a fair try especially not with a flying mount or not without a flying mount rather i'm no mount mountless and questing in zangamarsh a zone that i've really never quested much in so i think it should be a lot of fun pretty fresh for me and hopefully we find some people to fight here too i have seen some people in the cities back there so it's just a matter of running out to them outside in the wild here i'm going to go ahead and do this marsh fang ripper quest it's a really easy one just kill 10 and you're done we're pretty close to level 66 and i want to get to 66 as quickly as possible so we can roll for a new ability okay quest complete okay we have some free gold right here i'm low on everything but it literally shouldn't matter I'm at the very tip top of the level bracket with this person. They've got a slower mount, so I should reach them. Varying Plague. Minister Strike. Just go for the Abyss. Abyss. Dead. Very, very nice. No gold, actually. But I got a bunch of items off this person. And a healing potion, which is always worth it. So we got a Bloodforge Gilded Crimson Chestplate that's actually pretty decent. So I'm, you know, I, I think I did good with this PK. Okay, after selling off that last inventory, we're at 321G that we've PK'd so far, which is pretty much amazing. And I'm going to go turn this quest in now, and we're going to get to level 66 and get a brand new ability off of that. So it's been a good night so far. Okay, let's see what ability we get. Come on, something good. Okay, this is fine, because if you read the patch notes, I went over this in a previous video, but you can actually re-roll defensive stance for free. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to look on the bottom left. Holy fire? Holy shock? Oh, okay. We can do something with holy shock. That is a interesting new ability to get. I'm actually running out of space at this point, which does suck. Um, but I think we'll be fine to put the shadow bolt on control W. And now we'll use holy shock and fire blast, which I believe they don't share any kind of diminishing returns or like shared cooldown so let's see i can actually upgrade this and i am a hybrid remember that guys so this does a massive amount of instant damage we can also get shocking consumption now which increases the damage of holy shock by nine percent on targets afflicted by devouring plague which works perfect with our ss spam as well so this is going pretty decent so just a quick recap before this next clip plays so i was just questing in zangamarsh when i was suddenly completely decimated by a group of like five i came to find out that it wasn't just me but multiple people that had been decimated by this group so me and two other people with grievances towards this group decided to group up ourselves and well push them out of high risk so we found where their location was and uh this is what happened an epic fight ensued <laughs> At this point, what was left of them turned on me, so I was getting some distance and I let my team finish them off, but that was a pretty sick team fight that we dominated, and hey, we got to quest freely in Zanga Marsh after that, boys. Pretty good stuff. Got a trinket off that one. We're all splitting the loot. This was really well worth it. At the very minimum, it was fun. Okay, on this person. This person was running so... She was trying to get away so bad. Okay. There we go. Holy shock. 
kidney. Not a full one, though. I'm going to go for the shadow step this rate. Dead. G, G. Okay, not very good stuff off this person. Just a green cloak, really, for the most part. But I'll take it for the XP. Honestly, being on a ground mount with a group in Nagran feels so freaking amazing, dude. Like, so many things you miss out from having flying mounts. I love it so much. So I actually have two things I want to show you guys real quick, but I've got to keep it short because one of the things I want to show you is this. This is what I experience whenever I'm uploading a video, and this is why my videos take so much longer now to put out. It's not just because I work a full-time job five days a week now and uh, don't have as much time, although that is a pretty big one. Although I've actually surprised myself on just how much efficient work one human being can do um once they put their mind to it you know it's just crazy thinking about where i was and where i am now but anyway that you know 700 ms it honestly goes up to about 1500 ms and i can't actually play or do anything and it sucks and that's for literally hours okay and that's because i had to move to a new place it's unfortunately a little bit more rural so worse internet options and it is what it is at least until i can move closer to my work you know after making and saving more money now the second thing I want to tell you guys about is this. I have mail, and I have a very good feeling about what this is, so I thought, let's just record and see. Alright, 31 gold from the auction house, from PKing by the way, 406 gold right now solely from killing other players, and that is a unequivocal fact, I promise you, it is solely from killing players. Uh, oh, look, 190 gold, because I PK'd a Bloodforge Adamantine figurine off of somebody, a tank trinket, and I was able to make a 190 g off that which is absolutely amazing and then another 11 and another one so we're at 610 gold just from killing other players don't try to tell me this is not an efficient way to make money while you're leveling because so far it definitely is i don't remember how much flying is but uh if it's around a thousand gold or so we probably will be able to afford it without paying any donation money which i'm gonna say is a really big accomplishment Okay, so I went ahead and I made a Nightmare character with my Chad Boinker name just so I can make sure nobody else gets it. And you know what? This might be a future playthrough just to try the Nightmare mode. I don't want to lose my gold right now. I want to save up for flying. I'd rather lose my gear. So I'm going to send my gold to this little guy right now as like a pseudo bank alt. And that way I won't lose my gold, but I will lose my gear. But yeah, I can easily farm more gold and more gear, but uh, it's easier to farm the gear than the gold in my opinion. So I think this is a good way to do things. Okay, and so we just got a tabard because we just joined a guild. The tabard looks great. We look absolutely amazing. I'm digging the new look. I'm going to keep on leveling. We have a little bit more to go, guys. Four more levels, but we're going to get brand new stuff. And when we reach 70, hey, that's going to be more rerolls and a possibility of getting shadow form. Because I am not giving up, guys. I'm not going to turn this into anything else. We are sticking to the hybrid, shadow hybrid model. So we've got to make it as good as possible. On this guy. All right. I'll take the XP, dude. He said I don't get items. I got three greens, guys, and a scroll of protection, which I know is not that great, but three greens? I just made 10 gold off that guy. You're telling me 6k XP and 10 gold for nothing is not worth it? Yeah, okay. So what I really need to do is play out my build a little bit more in PvP. Like I said, it has been a few days since my last clip, so I actually feel a little bit rusty, but it's not just that. It's also the fact that the build is very complex because it is all over the place, and we're going to have to make some decisions at level 70 based on what we roll. I'm going to stay shadow, uh, that's basically how I want to do it, but at the same time, if another build were to present itself to us on this character and it came out perfect, I might be enticed to change to that build. So we will have to see. Shadow form, of course, being the absolute best role. Corruption being the second best role. Uh, and then I could also actually see maybe Fireball coming in here. And then I could just go Fire Hybrid for a little bit. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. I don't see myself keeping Holy Shock, though, because even though it can be a decent instant heal, that might actually be enough reason to keep it. Uh, it's not really doing me too good by taking a talent point away, so I have to mull through that. Definitely want to get rid of Counter Attack, though. That would definitely go first. And as we were saying that, I noticed this Ogre compound is full of dead Ogres. And this is where Alliance actually quests. So maybe I can find... A traitorous alliance. Oh, there we go. All right, we're on this guy. Meditate right off the bat into the stun and the fireball. I don't have the devouring plague up. That's wrong. 
Okay, as she's silence, we'll put up the Curse of Exhaustion. Nothing on me currently that I can get rid of, curse-wise. But I can put a Rejuvenation up, so we'll do that. Alright, renew the stun. Flow, rather. We're gonna go in for the Kidney. Alright, I should have been better about that. But she did Dispersion for some reason. Okay. Oh! I have a lot of magic. So I'll stun you. Okay, we're gonna go for the stun. There we go. And she's dead. Oh, and she is... Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so rusty. Dead. GG. I'll take that loot. A talent I'm going to go ahead and try out is actually improved disarm. So what this does is reduces the cooldown of my disarm by 20 seconds. This puts my disarm at about a 40 second cooldown as you can see down here uh, from the tooltip. That's pretty good, but it also increases all damage I do to my target while they are disarmed for 10 seconds. This essentially makes my disarm a 15 rage, 40 second uh, offensive cooldown, where I can increase the damage I do to my target by 10% for 7 seconds. It might seem small, but it's also a disarm, so on melees, it's actually pretty huge. I can also get rid of Blade Storm, so we'll see how it works. We'll see if it actually makes a difference. Maybe we can set it up right before we do an Eviscerate and a Shadow Step before that as well. Uh, for a massive big crit it might work okay actually i think i'm going to put this on the shelf for now and i got a comment about this on i think episode three or four where they said i can take amplify curse which increases the damage of my curse of agony but it also allows me to have multiple curses on my target at once so what this is going to allow me to do is put both my curse of exhaustion and my curse of agony on the same target which is going to make things a lot easier because it's going to give me extra damage that i desperately do need to be using Oh my gosh, I just got the Stormbringer Cloak. So it's not only a good level 68 cloak, but it's also a really good legendary RE. Uh, it might actually be better than the one I'm currently using, the Seething Flames RE. I'm not sure yet. The good thing about this one that I just got is that it slows my target by dazing them. Uh, that's very advantageous when all you have is Curse of Exhaustion. So I'll take it. That's pretty good. Okay, we have these 262s up here. I'm just going to go for the 1v2. I'm at the tip top of the level bracket so I can still get loot from them. I'm going to start on Pokemane. Alright, Shadow Step. Divine Shield. Alright, I got to switch. Come on, Miss Kitty now. Okay, popping the I popped the Divine Protection. I'm going to have to turn, I think. Watch, okay, turn on Pokemane. I'm, I've just got to drop one of them, and I can easily 1v1 the other. Okay, we're, we're, we're close. Fire Blast. SS. Go for the SS if it... Oh, stun. Yes. Okay, Shadow Bolt. SS. Oh my god, the Eviscerate didn't kill. She's healing him. She's healing Pokemane. I got a kick. I got a kick. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Okay, I got to get this loot. I got to get this loot. She's trying to save her friend's loot. Okay, we got it. Let's get on this person now. Dude, the shadow step kick, man. All right, we're on this person. I think kidney. No, let's meditate. Let's play safe. Let's play safe. She might respawn on us. I have shadow fury. I can use that. Let's go. Okay. SS spam. This. This is easy. I mean, at this point, this is why I needed the 1v1 because I still have a level gap, right? So I'm going to win the 1v1. The, the 1v2 is the only situation where this is even like slightly fair. So I'll take all the free loot. Thanks, guys. Okay, so I forgot to record it, but I did end up making another 210 gold just from PKing. And I sent 150 of it over to my alt. And so I'm just going to go PK with 66 for now. And I think that should be just fine. As soon as my Hearthstone comes back, I'm going to Hearth to Thralmar. And and then we'll get right back to trying to find somebody to fight. Again, probably Nagrand, uh, maybe Zanga Marsh. All right, I'm on the max level cap against these two guys. So I'm going to just fight them and just get the free loot. All right, let's dot the other person with the protection up. I'm going to switch now. Stun that guy. Slow this guy. Disarm. Go for the damage. Eviscerate. 
trinket? Oh my god, what's happening? Okay, so we got some pretty amazing stuff from that. Um, we got some blues that are pretty high tier and should sell. We also got this wingman epic RE that I've never seen before. It makes it where challenging shout applies an aura to you, increasing your damage taken, but also reducing the damage and nearby allies take by 10%. So that's very interesting. You take more damage, but your allies take less. Cool supportive uh, type of re and then we also have these really good demon hide spalders but they, they don't go for that much on the auction house and a six demon bag which can go for a decent amount depending on how many of them are on the market so i'm happy with all of that i think we also got these blood forged iron blade gauntlets which are not quite as good they they would be better than what i had if i had some gems maybe but i i don't right so uh you know for now we'll keep it and we'll see what we can do with it but those potions came clutch as well very happy i pk those off of a guy prior to that because i couldn't have won without him Okay, we're gonna go ahead and sell everything that we've gotten so far from PKing, one of which was a, I didn't even realize this, but a Bloodforged Hell Reaver. This is interesting, it's better than what I have. It's way better because it gives strength, and the strength is what actually helps get my spell power up, right, because of the mental quickness talent. So, I didn't even realize I got that before I logged off last time I was playing. This is crazy. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. I can't even believe it. Oh my god. <laughs> That is so much better. Okay, so we went from 416 to 505 to now 448 to 543, and we gained 1%, a little more than 1% crit. I just have to put that aggression random enchant from my axe, and I have to put the earth living back on. Okay. Okay, so now we have the spectral steed, which is going to be a pretty cute little ground mount for me to be using right now. A pretty badass one. Uh, it summons cool too. I'm really happy with this. And apparently it acts as a flying mount as well. So as soon as we can get flying, we won't have to buy a wyvern or a wyvern, however you want to say it, which is very, very nice. Also, apparently a lot of people told me that my seal of light will actually proc earth living, but it's a very small chance to proc because it is a proc within a proc. But that's still pretty cool. I don't feel like I've ever seen it, so it's possible that's wrong and it's all wishful thinking. But enough people have left me a comment telling me that, that I think it actually might be correct. So we'll take it and we'll see if it happens. Look at this. They literally had no slows, nothing. But they attacked me. And <laughs> they're 2v1ing. Okay, we're on Banthar, or Ban- yeah, Banthar. <laughs> oh, he hits hard. Alright. Oh, we got him! Oh, that was so close, guys. That was so insanely close. I'm not even really sure how I did that. I played terribly. Alright, well, one out of three, and if they're as hard as Banthar, this might be something we have to be worried about. We could potentially die, or get ganked by a player, which definitely would not be good. We have some great gear on right now, and I didn't put my orb in the bank, and even though it's only worth like 30 gold right now, I don't want to lose it. So, this is another thing. I, You know, I've really not experienced as much of TBC's Outland as I'd like, despite it being my favorite expansion. And I just put two and two together and realized that that might be why it's my favorite expansion. Because I have more mysteries to unfold in it than almost any other. So I found this one quest, Gavaxi. Apparently, I get Zerich Vintage Musket from it, which is a big, big, big upgrade over what I've got. Yes, I lose a little bit of crit, but I gain 12 stamina, guys. And uh, that's great. So we're going to go for this quest as well and uh, keep on going for all of our bosses. Okay, this is this is Gavaxi. This is nothing. This is absolutely nothing at all. Boom. 1455, no crit. Grab the meditate at the end. Don't mind if I do. 
There we go. GG. It's going to be a free new gun for me, which is a pretty nice bonus. As much health as you can get is really the way to go right now, especially while leveling. Shadow Fury. Get that. I got to get my Shadow Bolts off a little bit more consistently. So I should have Death Wished first, but we're going to go in for more. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that was a big crit. Protection. There we go. There we go. We actually got him. Eye of Gut Ripper. I will take it. Barely getting him. Um, almost dying to bleeds. <laughs> uh, but not quite. Okay, we're in a fight. On this guy. Meditate on his death. Oh, shit. Is he gonna live? Yeah, he died. Nice, got some loot off that too. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit, that's a lot of loot. Yeah, they did just lose the 3v5. I just forgot to click the record button at first, but I wasn't going to let you guys miss this whole thing, so <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, we're about to do this quest, so... Ah, <laughs> yes! That is awesome. And these two guys got level 70, so congrats to Sid and to Comedian. God, this is great. All right, I'm actually going to hearth... Uh, no, I'm going to go back to Gardar and fly, actually, to Shatrath, then go to Org, sell everything, prepare, and then, yeah, we're going to get to level 70 before you guys even know it. Our damage now goes from 454 to 549 to now 489 to 602. <laughs> oh, we're going to hit so hard, guys. Oh, we just got to get the random enchant on it, and it's going to be golden for us. All right, and this is the Nessing Worry quest. We only need, like, what, 250, 280,000 more XP? That's like three or four or five quests, something like that. Uh, and we'll be 70 in no time. But I actually want to find some people to fight, especially with this new stuff. So let's get to Gardar, like I said, this time for sure. So I think with these two talent essence, I'm actually going to go ahead and put them into Dirty Deeds. It doesn't really do me much for most of it. It says my rogue specials cause what's going to end up being 20% more damage against targets below 35% health, which is actually very, very good. What I was trying to say is we don't get the reduction in energy cost of Cheap Shot and Garot because we just don't have it. But we do get 30 energy for sure when we Shadow Step, which is pretty fantastic. It's going to be able to guarantee a 5-point Shadow Step into Eviscerate combo for some pretty massive damage. If they're below 35%, that's going to be 30% increased damage on the Eviscerate. So I I think we've got some burst right there if we can play around that stuff i think it's going to be pretty good at least in the short term but i still need to get that shadow form we'll be able to re-roll more at level 70 um but yeah it would be very nice to have it we also have to make sure when we're rolling that we have a talent point left over or else we can't actually roll shadow form because it is a talented ability also, if we got it, we'd be able to take 4% reduced damage in general, which would add some tankiness, which would definitely be useful. Oh my god, actually starting at level 69, it looks like you can start getting Scrolls of Fortune for 200 Marks of Ascension each. I know I actually have in the literal thousands of Marks of Ascension, so, um, <laughs> literally 8,900. If it doesn't actually increase in price by that significant of a margin, so let's say maybe 100 each time, we might be able to end up with like 10 or 15 Scrolls of Fortune, which would give us a pretty good chance at getting something like Shadow Form. So I'm pretty excited to see what level 70 holds for us. Okay, guys, we went ahead and we got 12 Scrolls of Fortune real quick, but that is going to be the end of this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and to subscribe. We are going to roll, re-roll rather, so many abilities next episode, get to level 70, and begin a max level journey. So I hope you guys enjoyed, like I said. Hope you're prepared for the next video. McDoubles out.